Hello everyone, thank you so much for making the time. Uh, I am Dan Delamarski, I am a principal product engineer at Microsoft here in the Core AI division and I work on uh, AI powered developer tools, AKA GitHub Copilot and a bunch of fun stuff that comes with it with some awesome folks that you might've seen already at VS Live. So um, the session name that was originally in VS Live schedule was a little bit misleading because it said know everything you want about MCP and they gave me an hour slot before this that I did, so you'll have to check out the videos afterwards and you'll do this. Uh, instead, which is protected MCP servers with uh, C-sharp. Uh, so part of the job that I have uh, with Microsoft and outside Microsoft is actually being one of the core maintainers for the model context protocol with the folks at Anthropic. So um, we're working with them to flesh out the protocol and make sure that it works well for a lot of the scenarios that developers have. And uh, my uh, very favorite topic, of course, is security. And how do we make sure that we're building MCP servers that are secure and uh, what we refer to as protected. Um, so in the context of protected MCP servers, one of the things that I want to call out is that this is applic uh, applicable to remote MCP servers, right? Like we, in the previous uh, session that I just had this morning, I talked about the difference between local and remote servers. Uh, as a refresher, local servers are the ones that run on your box. It's a binary. Uh, remote servers are the ones that run somewhere in the cloud. They have an HTTP endpoint. Um, so when MCP first came out, one of the things that uh, was very obvious from kind of the, the, the beginning for developers is the fact that you had to be a security expert to build a lot of the protections in place. So if you want to actually help gate your MCP server from people that uh, should not be able to access it for some reason because they're malicious actors that want to exfiltrate your data, uh, you had to build your own stuff. But in June, we worked with Anthropic to actually create a new authorization specification. And that authorization specification essentially did something that is very, very key to how developers perceive MCP. And that is one, we split up the uh, resource server and the authorization server. The, the, these sound like buzzwords because if you're not really in the security space, it's totally fine. Resource server, it's an API. Authorization server, it's whatever um, server or service that is responsible for minting tokens to the users that go and authorize themselves against your API. Uh, also, because the MCP servers proliferate and we have a lot of them nowadays, uh, there's like thousands, a lot of times when you start connecting them to a lot of the MCP clients, like be it Claude Desktop or VS Code or VS, uh, you might end up in a scenario where you actually don't know how to authorize. Like what if the server uses Entry ID? What if it uses Octo or Auth0? Uh, well, we also baked in this concept in a spec that's called the uh, it's it's helping the discovery. It's called the protected resource metadata, and we'll get to that in a second. The new spec for MCPs, of course, follows the modern authorization standards. It's one extra request for you as a developer to care about. Uh, that's it for you to build protected MCP servers. All you need to do is just bake in one extra request in your implementation. But we asked ourselves, can we lower the barrier? Can we make this easier and easier for developers to implement if you're building MCP servers for any, any scenario? Um, much lower in terms of barriers, like significantly, significantly lower. So um, if you're building secure MCP servers, what are the things you need to care about? Well, let's take a look at kind of the flow. Uh, you have two core components that you always have in a picture. This is the MCP client and the MCP server. The MCP client is the thing that talks to your, or has the LLM embedded in it and allows you to channel a lot of your input to MCP servers. It can be VS, it can be VS Code, it can be Claude Desktop, as I said. MCP server can be anything. It can be the Azure MCP server, the GitHub MCP server, or anything that allows you to access data or applications. Um, when the MCP client first connects to the MCP server, and your MCP server specifically, we're assuming here that is protected, requires actual authorization, the MCP client is going to request the data and say, hey, I need some information about your GitHub pull requests, or I need some information about uh, whatever other, you know, whether it's metadata about the user or maybe some other data from a database, it's going to go request it, to which the MCP server is going to respond with a 401 unauthorized with something that is known as the PRM, the Protected Resource Metadata Document. MCP servers that are protected by any identity provider, any authorization server, expose 
a blob of JSON that basically tells the, any MCP client, for example, Claude Desktop or VS Code, uh, hey, here's what I'm actually using to authorize users, whether it's Enter ID or any other identity provider. Uh, the client then gets the document and says, great, now I know who to talk to to get my token. And it's gonna then talk to the authorization server, get the token, and only then start talking to the server. So if you are familiar with the concepts, like very, very basic concepts of OAuth, a lot of those concepts are very much applicable to MCP servers and building specifically protected MCP servers. So the question then comes down to, great, this is all sounds boring because I have to do this myself. I have to go and read the spec. I have to go and understand the flow. Uh, can the SDK actually make it a little bit easier so I do not have to worry about any of the stuff? Uh, and the answer is yes, we, it, absolutely. Um, I love the C-Sharp SDK because I help contribute to it and there's some awesome folks that work here at Microsoft that also contribute to it. Um, few guiding principles those for it. So when we, when we talk about like making sure that the protected MCP servers can be created very easily, we looked at ways in which we can make this one simple and intuitive. Like if you're a C-sharp developer, if you're a .NET developer, things should just work within the constraints that you're used to as, as of course, as a .NET developer. We also wanna make sure that it plug and play with the .NET ecosystem. If you're building ASP.NET Core applications, things will just work. If you're building applications for Windows, things will just work. And if you're building applications that are cross-plat, things will just work as well. So um, with that, Back in the day, uh, and this is where I refer back in the day, that's only uh, maybe like a few months back, uh, we had a basically pull request that introduced support for authorization for MCP uh, with the c -sharp SDK. So what does the code actually look like? So for this, let's take a look. I'm gonna swap here to my screen and let me just drag on over the Visual Studio. Let's take a look. There is the Visual Studio, there we go. Okay, so I have an implementation here that is, by the way, available in the repository. You can go to the model context protocol, the c -sharp SDK repo, and there is a sample called Protected MCP Server. Uh, if you are interested in kind of getting started with the um, a lot of the, the the C Sharp SDK and building protected MCP servers for a lot of this stuff, uh, things just are available as samples. You can go in and just look through them and start experimenting with them. You don't need to read the docs and go through a lot of these uh, from scratch. So uh, for the server itself, as I mentioned, you can look at the, the configuration. All this, by the way, is per spec. So if you're familiar with the concept of the MCP specification that exists, everything here is per spec. So, for you to create a protected MCP server, all you need to do is essentially set up a HTTP client, set up the, the client transport, which MCP has several. And as I mentioned in the previous talk, there is a CDIO for local uh, and there is streamable HTTP for remote. In this case, we're using SSC, which is a little outdated, but it's okay because the concepts still apply. Uh, and within it, we specify the auth requirements. This is it. This, this is the extent to the complexity of auth that you need to actually specify. You're basically saying the client name, the redirect URI, and the authorization redirect delegate. And that's, that's kind of it. Then you're just creating the server and making sure that it can respond to a number of tools that are embedded in that server because every server has a number of capabilities that it exposes for, uh, for customers. And that's usually shaped through tools. Uh, it's the most popular primitive. There are, of course, more. Um, then on the client side, if we're gonna look at what the actual MCP client looks like, let's take a look here. And I'm just gonna drag this right on over here. The MCP client itself is also not super complex. And remember when I said that like the, the goal here is to make it as easy as possible for uh, the, the developers to come in and build the integrations, we made sure that that complexity is abstracted out as much as possible. So for, for a client, I essentially set up the client with the, the, the regular, um, uh, let's, let's take a look here. Let me go actually like, so we have the client set up and I actually show you the wrong thing because the server is the other one. Let's take a look here. So if we look at the server, uh, da, 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 let's go to program.cs. Yeah, uh, the, the client itself, it sets up the transport. And the, in the server side, if you're familiar with ASP.NET, 
And if any of you have ever added things like jot validation or any of the conceptual pieces that are required for uh, managing authorization, a lot of those things can be reused very easily in this world as well. So we, you define things like the auth scheme, you define the validation logic, um, and then define events that happen on validation and authentication failure, and then set up the MCP with uh, the resource validation that is required for spec. Again, because you want to make sure that you are uh, controlling what scopes user have access to and what authorization providers they're using. Um, then, Within the same C Sharp SDK, we also offer a scaffolded OAuth server that you can actually experiment with and test things with. So I'm gonna drag on over yet another project here that actually is also available as part of our samples that you should go and check out. Uh, and this project is responsible for, because we know that testing a lot of the capabilities with auth is generally hard. Uh, you can use this sample. It's literally called the test OAuth server. You should not be using that in production because it is uh, not an authorization server designed for production, but you can use this uh, to set up the scaffolding uh, for the components that MCP requires. Things like dynamic client registration, things like uh, the ability to go in and um, set up kind of the, the token structure. All the stuff is just baked in into this uh, sample here. So if uh, our demo gods comply with us today, let's see if I can just run the OAuth server first. So we'll see it running. Uh, and this should be just our uh, test application, of course. So I'm gonna drag on the terminal window here. So you'll see that it actually is spinning up. So this is an in-memory test only OAuth server. Do not use in production, I, you, you heard it for, here first. Uh, okay, so we have it running. We have the, the browser here as well that tells it that it is in fact running with JOT support. Uh, now, what we wanna do is we want to also run the server. So I'm gonna go here with the protect MCP server as a default starting project. I'm gonna run this as well. And the server is gonna expose all the metadata that I mentioned earlier about the, the kind of the MCP protected, the protected resource metadata document, which is basically just the JSON blob that tells you where do I go to get tokens for users that come and authorize uh, with me. So we'll see it come up. It's of course, it's a 401 because uh, I am not authorized, which makes sense. I am in fact not authorized. Let's take a look here at the terminal. So we'll look at the MCP server and we'll see that there is a protected resource metadata endpoint here that I can go to. This is exposed by my server. And actually I just terminated the server, but we're gonna restart it again. And once it starts, I'm gonna show you what the blob looks like. Okay, it's still a 401 as expected, but now we're gonna to go to the protected resource JSON and I'm gonna pre-print it. And this is what the server exposes. It basically tells my client hey, when you go and try and authorize users with me, here's the, the, the endpoint that you need to do, you need to hit up to get the discovery mechanism running. And I'm gonna use the tokens in the header. And by the way, the scopes that I support are MCP tools. Every MCP server that is protected can actually expose a number of metadata that tells the clients what permissions it should initially request for the users connecting to them and how the tokens should be passed to the, the client, by the client to the server. And then let's run the client here. So I have the, the protected MCP client. Its only task is getting weather alerts. It has only one tool uh, based on the client transport. And uh, that tool is guarded by the authorization server that we just set up and the server requires it to be the case. So I'm just gonna run the client and we'll see uh, if it works or it doesn't work depending on how, how the day pans out today. Uh, so I'm gonna just drag on the terminal to over that screen. Uh, authentication is complete because again, it's a default dummy MCP like authorization server uh, that is not really designed for production. So the authentication is very, very quick and very, very easy. Um, and we'll notice here that it actually produced the weather alerts. So if we just scroll just a little bit up, uh, it actually went through the process of authorizing itself with the protected MCP server. It detected its capabilities because it had a token through our MCP authorization server that we hosted here and then got us the weather alerts. So um, MCP protected servers, super easy with the C-Sharp SDK. It's available today. Go to our samples. Uh, it's in the repo. Again, model context protocol slash C-Sharp SDK on GitHub. You can go there today. Uh, 
test it out by yourself. The docs are coming, the sample's already there, and it's ready for you to start uh, integrating. So that's as easy as it gets. And if folks have any questions, happy to answer them. And if not, uh, thank you so much. My pitch here is to sell you on the C Sharp SDK for building Protect MCP servers. Thank you. Thank you.